Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 7v7 custom match here on the most uh, amazing Neuroxis map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 in the Northwest, ending with Team 2 in the Southeast. Starting off with Team 1 Southern player and working our way clockwise around their lineup, we have in Ruby Red, Defective Lettuce. He is a UEF as a 1200 to his north in Chevy Crimson. We have the Seraphim player of K-Link as a 1000 rating. To his north in Pac-Man Yellow is the UEF player of Pavor. He is a 2500, the highest rated player on Team 1. And in the game overall, by a decent margin, at least 700 rating points between him and the second highest rated player in the game. To his north, we have in the rear guard slot for his team is Melon Wise as a Seraphim and Batman Gray as a 1400. In Regal Purple to his east, we have Stake as a Cybern for his team. He is a 1200. In Light Oak Town to his east, we have the UEF player of Marta 1. He is a UEF as an 1800. And last but not least, at 14 1 in the middle of their lineup in Stitch Blue is the UEF player of Gumpy. He is a UEF as a 12 of 100. For some reason, I want to say Grumpy whenever I see his name, but it is Gumpy. And again, for Team 1 side of the map, they have four UEF, one Cybran, one Seraphim, and. Sorry, two Seraphim, excuse me, and one Cyber, which means Team 1 lacks Aeon technology. Starting off with Team 2's Northern player and following clockwise around their lineup, we have in Rust the Cyber player of Cheerios. He is a 1600, and again, he is in Rust. To his south, we have in Lightish Red Pink, Dulaha as a UEF, as a 1400. In Royal Blue to the southeast, we have Alfie123 as a Cybran as a 1500. And to his east in Emerald Green, running around the map here so far, it is Sapir. He is an 1800, the highest rated player on his team. And again, he is a Seraphim for his team. In Snow White to his northwest, we have Desert Wolf as a Cybran as a 1300. And in the southwest, we have in glow in the dark green omni haven as an aeon here he is a 1400 and last but not least there for team two in orange the color orange obviously not to be confused with orange the fruit orange is Babel. he is a 1400 as an aeon as well so for team two side of the map they have at least one of each of the factions but they do have three cybrans two aeon and that does mean that they have one UEF and one Seraphim. And as a reminder, Team 1 lacks Aeon technology. And for 14 players on the map, let's take a look at how much Reclaim they have to scoop up. Currently sitting at only three, not even 4,000 mass, 3,400 mass to scoop up. That is n almost nothing. It isn't nothing, but it's almost nothing, making it about... 200 or so mass per player not really anything to write home about but like i always say something is always better than nothing and in terms of mass points it definitely follows the same thing here with the reclaim where there's not really a lot of additional mass points on the map besides the mass points that are kind of some of them dotted around the main you know territory for team one and team two there's a couple of dual mixes here on these plateaus there is a couple of dual mexes here down in the south as well. There's actually three dual mexes in the middle as well as a couple of ones dotted about here in this southwestern section of the map. But besides that, there's really nothing a lot to fight over, which means our players are going to be desperately fighting over anything and everything they can grab. So let's go to see where our players are headed off to in this game. I will speed it up just a tiny smidgen so they can get further and further to the middle of the map in terms of their comms. Currently, we do have a couple of comms for Team 2 pushing it to the middle here in the south and in the middle. Gun speed has been started for Omni Haven. Desert Wolf and Babel have made their way forward, followed by Sapir and Alfie. So five players on Team 2 sending their comms in this direction. Team 1 currently has four of them in this relative area of the map. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, excuse me. I didn't see the other one from Melon Wise. We have five players on Team 1 sending their comms and or units in that direction. We do have a comm from Marta 1 already sent units 
around or uh, I should say above this upper plateau section and is starting a land engagement against Dulaha. You'd think that'd be Cheerios, but Cheerios is focused on possibly a, uh, looks like he's focused on his T2 air upgrade. We do see the other player on Team 2 going for a gun damage range in their main base. That's for Dulaha. And of course, we do see Stake over here to the north nearby Martyr 1. Speed has been started here. Actually, I already said Speed's been started. Speed is almost done here for Omni Haven. Probably would go for range as of next. We do see his units pushing in to the western edge of the map, trying to force out Team 1's Pavor and Defective Lettuce. We do see that a gun speed range has been started for K Link. And I don't know. Looks like that upgrade here for Dulaha has stopped for the time being. We do see a large advantage for Team 1, at least in terms of this kind of isolated northeastern corner of the map. Gun damage range has been started for Gumpy. Here for Martyr 1, he's trying to shove out Dulaha. And no, you cannot get units past this uh, little hill edge, whatever you want to call that. Unlike those monkeys a couple of weeks ago or so that kind of like skated the edge. We do see that the calm of Cheerios is on a transport moving into this position on the map. Trying to force back his opponent and trying to save his teammate's position. Which means that there are two players' attention, at least in some degree, focused in this section of the map. We do see that those gun upgrades have started to be emerged even more here for both teams. Gun speed and range has been started here for k -Link. If I haven't already made a comment already, T2 on the way here for Defective Lettuce. So he's going to be more of a defensive player while we do see that Pavor is still holding position going for a land factory. Just kind of very far forward. He doesn't have any sort of support here. He's kind of just on his own which he's all the way back here, at least his main base is. So he's mainly focusing on getting his eco up and running and trying to scale that as fast as possible. We do see that similar things are happening here for Team 1's Melonwise going for a T2 air facility, which we haven't seen any sort of T2 upgrades as of yet for Team 1 finish. We have seen, of course, the air facility done for Cheerios in the east. T2 on the way here for Dula in his base. He's going for all of his upgrades in his base, not sending his comm forward. I get wanting to have the upgrades done and then be sent out. I understand that. But having that calm on the front lines, even non-upgraded, is better than nothing. We do see a nice engagement here for Team 2. 3v1-ing Melon-wise. We do see K-Link with his gun upgrade moving into assist as well, trying to cover for him and trying to build a couple of some land factories to, to kind of disrupt the pathfinding here for their opponent. 18-hour day. Going to ruin my attention, <laughs> says Melon-wise. Well will point out that you know there are players that do that like Melanoise that play this game at you know <laughs> late hours of the day or morning depending on uh, the time of day that the matches take place. T2 also going on for Pavor in the southwest so both of these UEF players deciding to be a little bit more defensive playing to their strength of being tanky we do see that Omnihaven pushing in with his gun speed slash range upgrade because those are of course two different upgrades and if I say speed and range it Kind of confuses myself because it's not the same upgrade. Cheerios forcing back these forces outbound from Mardu 1, but they're starting to overwhelm them a little bit. We still have a couple of facilities online for Dulaha. We have more and more units being thrown at this, and even units on a transport. Looks like there's a couple of strikers inbound for Mardu 1. He's just spamming out as many units as he can, very similar to the campaign mission that we'll be releasing later on in the day. It's the first Cybern campaign mission and uh, that kind of hints at my uh, challenge for that mission. Well, I'll save that for the, uh, the video so that way you have to watch it to know what it is but I uh, think that kind of gives you an idea of what it could be. That transport with those units outbound from Mardu 1 gets shot down by Cheerios. He's just producing some T1 air units just to assist with dealing with these forces outbound from Mardu 1 and some piercing attack, not piercing attacks but forward momentum Going here for stake, there's no you know, opposition for him to face. So he's continuing to push in. And we also see that Gumpy starting to force back Babel here in the middle. Most of the calm action has been focused on kind of the southwestern section. We do see there's four players here and three players here. Seven of the 14 commanders are in this kind of small little quadrant on the map. And we do see, of course, possible attacks will be mounting here outbound from Gumpy. I wouldn't be surprised to possibly see Stake either try to go straight for Cheerios' his main base or just link up with Gumpy and go straight for Babel and go with that attack vector. We'll just have to see how it plays out. 
Marta one continuing to put the pressure on here, but now we see Dumaha has joined his teammate of Cheerios, and now it's two comms versus zero, and that will most definitely favor team two as this game progresses. We do see that again. Team two is holding a central position in the middle, trying to grab as many mixes as they can, but even as they do so, team one is leading ever so slightly in the mass game, but that lead can... Uh, be extended if Team 1 does focus more on Eco. We do see it's almost 300 for Team 1 and 260 for Team 2. And again, the reclaim, not really anything of note. I mean, we're already 11 minutes in, and I mean, there's not really a lot of reclaim on the map anyways. At least that's what started off with. We do see that Detective Lettuce is going for some T2PD to force back Sapir. He has some assisting forces from Omnihaven, but there's really not a whole lot that Team 2 can do against the PD creep that is happening by both of these players. They're really forcing back any sort of momentum from Team 2's land units. We do see that gun speed range has been started for Sapir on board his commander. Desert Wolf also has uh, a gun and stealth upgrade online. He might go for Nano. He also has uh, his teammate of Alfie going for T2, going for some Team D. Love to see that kind of cooperation here and teamwork between these two players if one goes for the uh, t2 upgrade one goes for the gun upgrade so one can go for defense and one can go for offense love to see that sort of thing it's a nice little sword and shield kind of action in that territory of the map we do see that missile launcher has been started for dulaha trying to again strike at marta one's position of course, there's really just a lot of T1 units. There's no T2 units as of yet. We do see T2 land is online, but he's skipping T2, going straight for T3. He wants the Titans and the Percy's online sooner rather than later. T3 air is online from Melonwise, and I think that's the only... Nope, there is another facility. It is Pavoys, but it is T2. So Team 1 has T3 air technology. Team 2 also has T3 air technology in the form of Sapir and Alfie, and we also see, of course, another facility that could go for T3 quite easily for Cheerios. So potentially three air players, potentially four air players, excuse me, for Team 2 versus the one possible second air player for Team 1. Tactical Missile is almost done on Dulaha's commander, and T2 has been started on Sapir's commander as well. The front line starting to get more and more thick to deal with here for both of these teams. One team going for more of a mobile defense with a lot of units, and one team going for more of a stationary defense with a lot of PD and shielding. There is a shield starting to be built here for defective. We do see that there is a slow kind of encroaching attack here outbound from Omnihaven. He has the advanced range upgrade on board that Aeon Commander, so he is in the Aeon Sniper mode if he goes for shield or heavy and heavy shield. That'll be the best situation for him for offense. And Desert Wolf and Savior and Alfie moving in from this position, coming in to go after Defective Lettuce. I always want to say also Detective Lettuce, but it is an F instead of a T. K-Link being forced back by a couple of missile launchers and PD. And Stake about ready to breach the walls here against Cheerios. We do see that also Gumpy is moving in. Babel pushing back as well. Lots of back and forth here in the middle. And like I said, there's not really a lot of mechs to fight over, so every player wants every mech they can get. We do see that missile is outbound here against Martyr 1 going after mechs, I would assume. Looks like it gone after one of the T2 land facilities and the other mechs that was there. But T3 land is halfway done. T2 air is also online here for Martyr 1 as well. Another missile is outbound, going to take out another facility. Two more remain, which... That's not a huge concern for Martyr 1. There's still a lot of territory that Team 2 will have to grab. But now we see Team 1 Stake has broke the dam. The walls have come down. Cheerios has gone on board. Stake has gone on board. And these two commanders trying to, again, one, force their way forward. The other one trying to hold back. A couple of Corsairs outbound from Cheerios as well, trying to force back Stake. We'll do a decent job of that. We also see a couple of units up here on this upper plateau for Stake as well distracting Team 2's APM. And we do see in the west, Gumpy going after Babel. This will be the first departure of the game at almost 15 minutes. And Gumpy with that gun upgrade forces back Team 2 and gets the first kill of the game. We do see in the east, T3 Strap Bomber Online going after Dumaha's commander. At least that's what it looked like it was going after, but maybe it missed. He hasn't taken a lot of damage, so... Looks like that uh, T3 Strat Bomber is going after something else. 
Don't know what it could be. Looks like it's going for the back line here for Team 2. But there are some ASFs inbound as well as some interceptors. And that uh, bomber is getting nowhere. It will fly off screen. Boy, a brief moment. Will it be saved is the question. It's not able to be targeted quite easily. We do see that that bomber is saved because it does fly off the screen. Strat just insta-lost orders. <laughs> yeah, I don't know really what happened with that. Does land on that, I think, T2 mechs that was sitting there. And it looks like it will uh, get shot down. I don't know where... Where'd it go? It was over here. Did I just, did I just lose it somehow? Uh, looks like there it is right there. So it did get shot down as it was making its turn. But yeah, definitely weird. It looked like it was going for something and then just, like he said, lost his orders and went somewhere else. Don't really know what happened there. And with that, Team 2's player of, let's see, Sapir gains control of an additional base. Jump starting is equal to 100 mass per second. And in contrast, Team 1's Pavlor, who's on only one base, has 150 mass income. Double that of anybody else on his team and that's just because he's going mainly just eco 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 and now he's going for t3 air and of course getting those engineers to pump out some t3 p gems so he is trying to focus as much as he can on going for his whatever he's going for eco we will have to see what he does with it of course he could always go for the lasers the uh Low, low, low orbiting lasers of the Novaxes. Shield has been started for Omni Haven here in the south. It looks like the action has cooled down a decent amount considering Team 2 has lost the player, so they have to be a little bit more conservative with their commanders and how far they push in. 17 minutes on the clock. I think uh, it's worth speeding up just a tiny smidgen. We do see that Dulaha still pushing out in this northeastern corner. One T1 mechs, a couple of T1 mechs actually are still alive. All of the facilities have been scooped up and have now retreated lots of courier T1 light air transports online. Don't know what Martyr 1's doing with all those, but he's doing something with them. Looks like he's sending units across the map. He has a couple of Percy's being delivered. That's why he's sending so many, or he's built so many. Stake has decided to retreat. He is in the yellow. And he's going to get back to his main base. Doesn't want to be sniped and be the first player on Team 1 to die. Another Strat Bomber is inbound somewhere. There it is in the south. Melonwise going after, it looks like, Omni Haven's something. Looks like it almost took out that T2 land facility and a T2 mech, most likely. The uh, the wreck is gone, so I can... Oh, no, the wreck is still there. Yeah, it's a T2 mech. We do see that Omni Haven might start to retreat here. Lots of ASS being built by Team 1, and I surprised Team 2 is doing the exact same thing, having multiple players with T3 air factories. And that bomber is inbound, looks like, for that facility. We'll drop the bomb and we will take out the facility. Won't take out the engineers nearby, but at least we'll uh, take out a frontline facility on his opponent. T3 air is online for Cheerios here in the east. So now we have three players with T3 air facilities. And possibly a fourth if Dulaha does decide to go for that upgrade. Bomb will drop once again. Going after those engineers says no to that particular mech's position. And that uh, nice little reclaim of a bomber will land pretty close to Omni Haven's engineers to scoop up. And in the northeast, we see Dulaha continuing to push in on this northeastern corner. But it's going to start running into some T3 units. Lots of Percy's lining up here. He has a couple of shields as well as a couple of AA units and missile launchers and it's now starting to PD creep a little bit but we see the Janus fire inbound here going after the shield strength on those parashields. The Percy's have not been given orders to move in as of yet but PD creeping has been occurring for some time now and it looks like Mirander 1 is just going to build up as many Percy's as he thinks his needs and send them in at once that would be the idea Dulaha does have gun, T2, and is at three-star veteran so he has 18,000 hit points on board. So he has a lot of hit points to tank a couple of shots, but there isn't anything in this world that receive an infinite number of shots to the chest by Percy's. That's most definitely true. Laser started here for Cheerios. He already has gun on board. Maybe he'll go for an early telemazer. I highly doubt he'll go for cloaking because that's very dangerous to walk all that way. There's a lot of choke points on this map. It's not an open map, but you can kind of just get around some units. You're going to get spotted at some point. 
We do see transports ahoy, <laughs> says uh, Melanoids. Yep, Jens, yep, already pointed that out. <laughs> it's funny. He's like, hey, there's uh, there's some transports up there. They got two in air, by the way. We do see that the facility on the upper plateau for Stank is still holding strong and really just annoying team, too. It does look like Cheerios made a comment he's going to go up there, which, I mean... There's a couple of AA. Looks like the transport is severely weakened, though. He has to be very careful. Looks like he might be dropping just out of range, which is definitely the best way to go about it. Cheerios will drop. Of course, he does have laser and can be spotted because there's no cloaking or stealth on board. But he's just going to bear the damage here from all of these Cerberus PD. They tickle him. He drops into the yellow very briefly, then gets into the green, then goes back into the yellow. Those uh, PD cannot withstand that firepower. Churros gets another rank in veterancy. We'll save him a little bit more hit points. Give him another rank in veterancy, and then might get him close to his fifth star that he needs to finish off for his 50% uh, increase in hit points. And he will grab it. So great move by Churros. He took a little bit of a risk, but he uh, he definitely mitigated that risk by getting those veterancies on board that commander. And again, in the southwest, things have very much died down here. Really no presence for Team 2. Team 1 still holding strong because they have stationary defenses versus the mobile defenses of Team 2's units. We do see in the northwest, T3 Stone Angel strategic missile launcher is online and almost half-loaded for Pavor. That's what he was building all of that eco for. And as a reminder, Team 1 has all seven players remaining. Team 2 has only lost one, that being Babel. And that was earlier on killed off by, I think that was Gumpy. Let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win this game. And, of course, if you haven't done so already, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And always thank you so very much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And, of course, let's take a look at the Ecos as well. Team 1 at almost 1,000 mass income. And Team 2 at 7, let's give them 725. To make the math, about 250 or so mass more for Team 1. And that's been severely driven. I really need to disable that. Uh, driven by... <laughs> Stop doing it. <laughs> click, 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 click. I'm being driven by Pavor. Okay, that's really getting... Hold on. I'm gonna, I, I normally don't do this during the recording, but where is that option? Because that is very loud. I know it's in here somewhere. I think it's an interface, possibly. Uh, messages. Oh, yeah. Messages when sharing energy. Off. I'll, maybe I'll share the units. Huh. So it's definitely disabled that, but I guess not, which is very weird. Anyways, apologies for that. I just wanted to have the clicking be stop, but for some reason, uh, they were already off. So, like, this is fine when it's just a... Message, but it's the starting. Stop sending energy. <laughs> Cheerios. Hey, if anybody does know any a, a definitive way to turn that clicking off, the clicking off, turning off all these messages for energy, I'd greatly appreciate it. Obviously, I just demonstrated that it shows that it's off in the uh, in the options, but I guess not. And it usually isn't this bad. Usually, it's just a little bit, but they are constantly sending out those clicks because they're just constantly sending as much energy as they can. Chicken is at 70% here, and I can't see it because all the energy. Give me your P-Gens. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is nuts. Everybody is giving power to Cheerios. And Nuke is outbound from Team 1's Pavor, and it's going after the rearguard air slot here for Alfie. That's really going to hurt. Team 2 has no SMD. Oh, excuse me. They have an SMD online, and it's going to load in time. Oh, no, maybe not. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, it might oh it might clip the range. The missile is loaded. Will it be fired? Yes, it will at the very close. That was very, very close. You can see it just barely trailed in. Had it gotten through that range, it would have been fine. And they're still sending Okay, stop sending mass to Cheerios. Stop. 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 It's almost done. <laughs> it's still going. It's still still going. They're still sending ma still sending mass and energy to Cheerios. Man, that's kind of annoying. I do apologize again. Like I said, if anybody knows a definitive way to just turn that, you know, just the send energy, send mass messages, I'd greatly appreciate it. Melon Wise says Monkey and Desert Wolf is building said Monkey and Sapir is almost done with his... Actually, that's not Sapir. That is Sapir messaging. That cane link is almost done with that chicken. Do you see that uh, he knows 
Did you see the Fat Boy is also in line for Pavor. So while he was building a nuke and loading it, he was also building a Fat Boy. And teleportation is outbound. It looks like it was canceled by Team 2's Cheerios because we have some ground firing going on for Pavor. Great use of APM there. He has a lot of Team 1 PD uh, everywhere. There's no teleporting anywhere in there for Cheerios. Cheerios is going to try somewhere else. No, not as of yet. Maybe he'll go for something else. Or, yeah, somewhere else, not something. I guess something and somewhere would make sense. We do see a couple of units trying to chase down that Fat Boy. Fat Boy doesn't get to usually fire at secondary uh, guns, but it does do a decent amount of damage. We see <laughs> this little obsidian trying to hide behind the uh, Fat Boy, and it's actually <laughs> its blind spot. Unfortunately, our nearby units that uh, help deal with that unit. And Team 1 will again still secure the southwestern section of the map. We do see that Omni Haven pushing in with his shield. Is that the? That's not the heavy one. That's the regular shield. Against Team One's Gumpy going for a T3 engineering suite upgrade. Cheerios has teleporter and he's deciding to transport his commander. Def I guess he doesn't want to spend the energy for it. That's definitely fair. Trying to save a couple of his mexes, which he does a great job of it against those Percy's. Fighting has occurred once again here between these two players in the northeast, between Martyr One and Dulaha, but now we see some assistance outbound from Pavor coming in with some PD and some shields to protect those units for Martyr One. You see Team Bank here for Sapier. Oh, we're talking about this outbound from Stake. Snipe opportunity is on the cards here for Stake, possibly going after the main base here for Cheerios. We can see the exact range on board those missiles and actually those are TMD not uh, that's what I wanted to grab excuse me it can attack Char uh, Cheerios' base and it can attack uh, Dulaha as well missiles are outbound for Cheerios' base though he's built some TMD and looks like Cheerios is going to move sniper attempt was uh, on the cards there but he moves just in time we possibly could see those missiles going after some uh, T3 Pigeons, but as of now, they have not decided to engage. Cheerios, not Cheerios, sorry. K-Link moving in. There's four, 14 players, actually 13 players still. One has died, but that's a lot of players to keep track of, so apologies if I'm running back and forth a lot. We do see that uh, the chicken is online here for K-Link, pushing in against Desert Wolf's position. That hasn't really been attacked in a very long time. A lot of engineers and a couple of units fleeing the scene as multiple experimentals outbound from Team 2 move in to intercept. Jurio, Kane Link is going to get a lot of work done with this chicken, get at least a one star of efficiency. Oh, please get the. Please, oh, he does grab the Omni radar. I was going to say it's definitely unfortunate if he doesn't go for it. And that uh, chicken is going to get sandwiched quite heavily by some Harbingers, a chicken, and some rhinos. Another unit from Desert Wolf, and that chicken is just going to go for bro, go for whatever he can. Get a little hug in there, get a little boop, and that'll be a kill here for Team 2. It will do a lot of damage to some units nearby, but it's essentially a, not necessarily a mass dump, but it's definitely a thing that they can easily go for, and those units are trying to flee as fast as they can. The Ion Storm is activated. A couple of Harbingers will die because of it, but that's going to be about it. There was no reason to push. There was zero support and no scouting. Probably talking about that chicken... We do see these units continuing to push in from Desert Wolf against K-Link and now trying to again split the difference between him and Defective Lettuce. We do see now that the Fat Boy from Power moving in. It has to be careful though, that Chicken and uh, Monkey are inbound and they are going to go after that Fat Boy. If Fat Boy not moving is not good for its health, that's for sure. And that Fat Boy has started to retreat because of it. A couple of Sniper Bots down here as well as some Shields moving in to protect them. I don't see any huge things. We do see a crab being built here by Desert Wolf. Another Omni has been built in the main base for Team 2. Tr Artillery has been started. Padula has, has been taken out by Marta 1 in the northeast. Killed off by some Percy's. Looks like uh, they just marched in and killed him. So that will be another player that has uh, been removed from the game here by Team 1 and is now a 7v5, still in favor of Team 1. In the southwest, we do see that that fat boy is continuing to retreat. And that chicken is about to get in range. And some PD trying to hold off the cyber forces. But some Ravagers are being built here by fat boy to deal with those incoming forces. Some Harbingers are also moving in. And that chicken really wants that fat boy dead. That fat boy is trying to put as much firepower as he can on that chicken. But that shield is about to go down. Ravagers and PD trying to throw whatever they have. 
And they will probably get the chicken before it does heavy damage. But the Fat Boy is killed off anyways. Definitely unfortunate. They will get the chicken though, but the monkey will survive. I can say that thing should die. And it just took a second longer to die. Team 2, are you building anything else other than the artillery? Uh, nothing really much here for... I mean, Chirrus is going for a monkey. We have a crab down here that's almost done. And, of course, the uh, artillery. It started. It's not... I have a lot of progress to it, but it has been started. Uh, you sack now. We just get punished for it. Talking about Kalink. Talking about, I guess, uh, that chicken dying. The reclaim hasn't been scooped up as of yet, so at least that's a good thing here for... Uh, Team 1, but of course it did open the door for Team 2 to move in. That's mainly what uh, Pavlo is talking about. Bombers are inbound from Kaling to try to deal with this Monkey Lord. And there's not really a whole lot that they can do, unfortunately. Harbingers continue to move in. There's a lot of momentum now being shifted in Team 2's direction. Pushing in against Team 1's southern line that just doesn't really exist anymore. There's nothing there. It's just devoid of everything. We do see an interesting thing going down here from Melonwise. Staging his uh, air units up here on this plateau. Team 2 not really doing a whole lot of that either. There's, there's not either, but there's not really doing a whole lot of that. Remember, they're utilizing the, the territory that they have. And Neil's Air Forces are starting to get in the nice, thicker numbers. Almost 100 ASFs here for Team 1's Melonwise. And Alfie, how many do you have? You have 115, plus the ones outbound from Sapir, probably about 30 or so. 35, so about 150 ASFs for Team 2. Team 1 sitting at 100 ASF, so Team 2 definitely does have air control. Janus moving in, going after the Monkey Lord, trying to set it on fire, but not really having a whole lot of effect. Some damage is better than none, but it is going to take a little bit more than that. The nuke has been loaded by Pavor. He's waiting to fire it until he absolutely knows he will take out his target. Good thing to go after, of course, is the air grid and possibly what uh, Desert Wolf is doing, but also you could strike a decent blow on the Ecos for Sapir, striking right there at all those mass fabs surrounding those T3 mexes. We see any bigger plays for Team 1 Monkey Online for Stake. Looks like some gating in of some SSUs here for Martyr 1. Not really anything in terms of experimentals for Team 1. There's a Fat Boy started here for Gumpy, and of course is K-Link's chicken that he's currently building. But still at 33 minutes on the clock, the only big ticket items so far that are at least done are the nuke for Team 1's Pavor, and that's really about it. Of course, the artillery has been started. It's almost in the yellow, so it's almost 25% done, but it's still going to be at least a few minutes before that's done, and he's shifting over. It looks like to build some summoner T3 Quantum Gateways to get some more Rascoms. And with the death of Dulaha on this northeastern corner, all of these spearheads are just throwing all of these missiles at their opponent. Chirios is over here. He is in the yellow. And if he does not keep moving, he looks like he might be killed off here. Just be very careful. He has the Cybran Telemazer Commander already ready to go. And hasn't really been able to use it as of yet. Get out, please, says Sapir. Talking about this, he's going to get the transport. Always move. TML platform, says uh, Dulaha. A couple of bombers trying to disrupt the... Missile platforms here for spirit with those spearheads from Martyr One. But Cheerios, if he doesn't get on that transport, he's gonna look uh, not really great over here. And that unit can be targeted by ground units. A couple of Percy's are inbound. It could be a kill here for Team One if they just send in the troops. And Team One bombers over here really just throwing whatever they can. ASFs are moving in and some interceptors as well to assist. Cheerios has his own ASFs to assist with defense. He's pulled back his transport so it doesn't get shot. And those Percy's are coming into range. They see the calm of Cheerios. Will it be enough to kill him off? A couple of the first shots from the Percy's miss. A couple more. One more will do him. In, and there he goes. Team 2 loses Cheerios at 35 minutes on the clock. It is a 7v4 in favor of Team 1. Team 1 has not lost a player as of yet, but they are losing massively on the southwestern side. Forces inbound from a lot of players on Team 2. Now moving towards the middle of the map with all of these defensive forces here from Gumpy moving in to intercept. There's a, ch uh, sorry, there's a Colossus, there's a Monkey, and we saw a Chicken, I thought, at some point, but I guess uh, that one hasn't been built yet. I thought one was done. It is being, oh, it is done over here for safety, but it's not engaged as of yet. And that is a win here for Team 1. Once again, this northeastern corner will pretty much now be devoid of Team 2's everything over here. 
Looks like some <laughs> some missile launchers are having some fun just ground firing. Don't know why they're just shooting the ground, but they're having some fun doing it, I guess. Without wasting all your mass into base defenses, Pavor. And there is something to be said about that where stationary defenses are not the end-all be-all. But at least having some is, of course, better than nothing, of course. We do see that the chicken is going to engage that Colossus. Of course, the Colossus and Monkey will win that fight. But there are obviously are a lot of Percy's in this mix as well. Some of them being grabbed and just being vacuumed up by that Colossus. Harbinger's diverted from the main group, going after Kane Link's base and cutting off Team 1's defective lettuce from any sort of uh, reinforcements or fallback position. Bombers are inbound going for that Colossus. Will they kill the chicken off? No, Team 2 will not be able to kill that chicken off, and now the chicken will retask onto the monkey. This will be big here for Team 1, getting a nice little grouping of experimentals to scoop up. We do see the combo of Kalik moving in. He does have a gun comp, so he's not completely defenseless. And we do see, of course, some T1 PD being hastily built as fast as possible. Looks like the Harbingers are targeting the T3 Pugents and the Shields. And this is going to really devastate K-Link's Eco, at least in terms of the power department. T2 and T1 PD being built as well to stave off the attacks from the Monkey. The Monkey will pierce the Shields, but not kill off the T3 Pigeon. We do see that even Pavor is moving in to assist to defend his territory as well. He has a couple of mass fabs being ringed by a hydrocarbon. You do not see that every day. Trying to get some power assistance to uh, cut the power cost for him. He's doing a great job of keeping his eco quite balanced. Of course, he's at six, almost 600 mass per second, facing off against Sapi, who now has three bases. Uh, sorry, four bases. Looks like he has every base over here. Cheerios and, of course, uh, Dula House. So he has four bases, and he's sitting at 670. So Team One's Pavor is really pumping out the mass, and he's still on only one base, but he's really expanded out in the mass fab department and the quantum gateways, of course, with the fast boys as we know and love them. Now missile launchers cleaning up the area over here to the east here for Martyr One, and a little bit of assistance for Pavor, but it's mainly just uh, reclaiming so he can, of course, scale his eco even more. And with this force in the middle, Team One might be a little bit emboldened to attack. But I feel like defense is definitely the better option because Team 2 has a nice avenue of attack on the southern and the western edge of the map. Team 1 really needs to hold up somewhere else. SMD is built and is starting to be loaded. I don't know if that's really warranted at this point. Team 2 doesn't have a nuke anywhere. Or it doesn't look like they're building one. Just chicken and artillery. We do see the Quantum Gateway is online, but yeah, nothing in that department as of yet. Looks like there's another artillery installation over here. So two artilleries being built at the same time they are of course the disruptors not the best t3 artillery but they are pretty good i will admit grab has been started here by stake it's in the yellow and look at what i don't know what happened here but it looks like team one's pavor is building the scathis experimental mobile artillery ra rapid fire artillery unit and he didn't even go for the the mavor like he didn't go he's uef why isn't he going for the Maver then? For shame. Shame. <laughs> for Pavor. Not going for the Maver when he's UEF. And his name is like one letter off from Maver anyways. Ah, shame. But I guess he just wants the uh, widespread of that uh, Scathers. Which, to be fair, it would be very nice in dealing with a lot of these clumps here for Team 2. There's not heavy shielding, so a couple of Scathers shots will really be able to pierce those. But... Uh, of course, that is the downside with the Mavor. It's not really designed for a widespread base. It's mainly designed for, like, okay, I point at something and it dies kind of thing versus the Scathis where it's like, I want this area to die. So there is that uh, difference in language. We do see that K-Link is going for region or on board his commander. Definitely a little bit too late in the game, at least in terms of this map, to really go for an assist kind of a very tanky Seraphim commander. There's not really... I don't know. I, it, it's just one of those instances where if unless he goes for an advanced nano and advanced region, it's not really worth it. If he stays in his main base, cool, but that's not really going to help much. Of course, we do see a Rasp Boy online here for the Power Commander going for just for some air facilities just to pump out, of course, engineers for Reclaim Martyr 1. I think it's time, says Desert Wolf. I don't know what he's referencing, but maybe there's an intended coup possibly happening. 5 ASF Marta 1. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's what he's talking about. 
We do see that a uh, couple of spearheads trying to shoot over this uh, plateau, but unfortunately the TMD is too strong for Sapir, and those missiles are not breaking through. Monkey is online. There are some bricks just taking fire unnecessarily. And it looks like the ASFs are moving in for Alfie, going after everything that Team One's uh, Marty One owns in the air. Oh, transports with units on board. Oh, no, there they go. <laughs> and Team Two does spot the scat that's being built, and that's being built very quickly. It's already halfway done. The nuke almost has three nukes in its clip or in its silo. That is dangerous here for Team One's Pav, where he's not firing those. And, I mean, he could be using them, but he's not going for it. We do see an SMD has to be loaded here. Nuke is online here for Sapir, but that doesn't have a nuke loaded as of yet. But Pavor having three of them is crazy. Well, I mean, it's really taking his time to finish. Of course, he's uh, spending all of his mass and energy and whatnot on the Scathus, so it's really going to be a long time to load. Regendora has been, or advanced Regendora has been started for K-Lake, so maybe he's trying to assist his chickens on the front line, but looks like he's going to need some more energy to combat the uh, cost of that upgrade, possibly. More units being built here in the south here. A couple of chickens, lots of engineers for reclaiming bricks, as well as another chicken inbound. He's pumping out those chickens at Sapir. And ASFs are moving in. Will they take the fight? The ASFs from Melonize are just sitting there hanging out. This is a huge engagement here for Team 2. Distraction over here in the west here with those strap bombers going after most likely that Scathis. And those, sca those strap bombers are breaking through. There's three nukes loaded. Pavor is feeling the pain here from these uh, strap bombers. Almost said Scathis. And there goes the nuke with three of them loaded. Oh, he fires one at the last second, though. So he's able to get one off just barely. That was... Ooh, that's got to hurt. Strap Bomb is going after Pavor's Calm. Will it be a kill? He's still alive. Less than 250 hit points that I saw. And he does get killed off. Ooh. That's got to hurt. The nuke does get launched. And it will land. Kaboom. But it doesn't do a lot of damage. The last bomb got him. That was rough here for Team 1's Pavor. He lost his nuke. And he lost a couple of his... A ringed T3 Mex or dual ringed T3 Mexes, but the Scathis is almost done. Martyr One has control of it now. All he has to do is just click finish and it'll finish. We do see over here Defective Lettuce running it in the face of a couple of chickens. Ravagers have been built. Fat Boy is not going to finish. Might as well just try to assist whatever you can. Assist the shielding, anything, but that Fat Boy is not going to finish. And that was a great snipe here by Team 2's. Alfie and I will admit of course uh, Sapir, I think it was, yeah Sapir as well Sapir went after the sitting ASFs and then Alfie went for the kill which I love that kind of being able to split responsibilities artillery is done for Alfie in the southeast and artillery is almost done here for Sapir in the east as well we did see an attack in the east. Satellite is online for Team 1's UEF Commander of Martyr 1 and that Scathis has been completed doesn't have a lot of shielding, but he's fixing that as we speak. Still losing two nukes without being able to fire them. It's, just, it's painful. It's painful to look at. It's just, ooh, ouch. And that attack is still pushing forward here for Team 2. And we do see intercepting forces trying to move in. Team 2 now taking the opportunity to send more and more forces up with engineers to scoop up as they go. And the artillery from Marta 1's Gathis, that was technically Pavor's, but it technically is Mar uh, Marta 1's now, is able to take out the artillery for Alfie. And some uh, mass fabs going offline, unfortunately, and Pigeons to boot. Of course, we see an interesting uh, line of all of his ASFs just getting uh, repaired. The artillery is in the green in the east here for Sapir. So Team One, Team Two's not out of it yet in terms of artillery game, but that is uh, devastating here. Of course, losing most of the infrastructure for Pavor. We do see that defective lead is still running in the face of those chickens. We have some strap bombers inbound. Unfortunately, they won't break through. There's more and more AA that has been built in the meantime. 
And now it looks like the Scathis is focusing fire on maybe Sapir's? No, it looks like uh, Desert Wolf's position. His shields are offline. Oh, at the worst time. Oh, that's got to hurt. Oh, he doesn't get uh, hit, but Defective Lettuce is killed off by those chickens. It was only a matter of time before they caught up to him. So that is now a 5v4 in favor of Team 1. Team 1 Bomber is en route as well as some Strat Bombers to help assist with defense. And teleportation outbound from Team 2 is looks like probably Desert Wolf. Yeah, went straight for the Scathas, got the kill, was killed almost immediately, though. Monkey coming to assist, though. But that Scathas is now offline. I feed you free wind. Make another Scathis this bad boy. <laughs> and that chicken over here will be taken out by a combined effort from Team 1. But that is a Scathis now offline. You have 400. Oh, wow. That's a how much reclaim is on the map now? That's a lot of red numbers. That is 357,000 mass. And how much is on just this section? 200 of that. So more than half of the mass currently in Team 1's doorstep. Uh, in their, it's in their living room, sitting on their couch watching TV. And all they got to do is just get it off the couch and put it to work, essentially. Looks like the satellite going after the artillery over here in the east. Looks like it's trying to take out some of the shielding. There are, of course, a couple of wrecks over here to the east as well that both teams can scoop up, but they are primarily being uh, stationed by Team 1. They haven't sent engineers out as of yet. But still, more attacks are mounting here from Team 2. And, of course, they're reclaiming as they go and building defenses as they go. Slowly encroaching on Team 1's territory. And they're not trying to rush in and trying to grab as much as they can. It, doing it that way, the issue is, is that it's really easy. Very much like in Risk, where you just kind of overextend yourself and then you just get destroyed. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark here for him, Pavor. He's like, just build the... Build the Scaths, what are you doing? But it looks like uh, the UEF commander of Martyr 1 wants to build the Mavor instead. So we have now seen the Scathus, and now we will see the Mavor. Nuke is still online here for Sapien. It's about to finish loading its first nuke. I don't see anything else besides that artillery that he has online. He's not going for any game enders, which is surprising because Team 1 has already done that. Look like he's building another artillery, so two so far here for Team 2, at least two that can be completed. Interesting position with a bunch of AA over here for Melonwise. Don't know why that's there, but, you know, maybe he just had some mass to spend. Another Scath is being built by Team 1. Looks like it's been stopped, but it was started at some point. Artillery focused on this uh, P-Gen mass storage and uh, mass fab base here for Stake. Ooh, that Cascade is gonna hurt if it does go off. His shields need to regen faster. He needs to build more of them. We do see that that Mavor is getting up into the yellows now, so over 25% complete. And there it goes. Oh, there goes the Cascade. Ooh, he does take a little bit of damage from that. Definitely unfortunate for Stake, needing a little bit more shielding. We do see more satellites being built by Martyr1. He has his first one over here underneath some SMD protection. And a couple of Mikeloids pushing in by Sapir on this northeastern side. And there's really nothing that Team 1 can use to fight this. So they're kind of just stuck holding them off for the time being. More and more missile launchers being diverted, diverted to this position. Now they're on this upper plateau getting a better view on the environment. Looks like they're targeting the SMDs. The nuke is already killed off. So Team 1 doesn't have a nuke launch, at least that I can tell. I hear Strap Bombers launching somewhere. There's some snow over here, but that would be any nearby any action. Looks like there's Colossus going after this Fat Boy, but there are a couple of Monkey Lords nearby to assist it. The shields will be fine for that Fat Boy, and now all these bricks are just going to not have a good time now. Drop Bombers over here. That's possibly where they're being uh, launched at for Team 1. Artillery now targeting this position up here to the north for Martyr 1. That's one shield that needs a little bit more. There's a lot of mass fabs and pigeons over here. That's going to really hurt his eco. But he is sitting at 1.1k mass income versus Sapir's almost 1,000 mass income. And that Mavor is almost half done or half alive. We do see that the artillery has been restarted here by Alfie. This artillery is almost done for Sapir. So Team 2 almost has three artilleries online. That nuke, like I said, is loaded. It has not been fired as of yet. Looks like teleport is outbound from Melonwise's SACU engineering preset, building some T1 PD. 
and trying to again take out this disruptor. Love this play from Melonwise because all he does is send a couple of them out to assist. And I love this because it only costs him doesn't cost him a whole lot, and uh, hopefully it will net him great returns. Of course, some strat bombers are inbound here from Alfie to assist, and uh, those engineers engineering preset SACs do have some shields on board. Still haven't broken through the shields though. Looks like all their PDs taken offline though. Oh, they're gonna go after the shields are down. Oh, if that uh, satellite is nearby, it could easily target those uh, emitters. It's going after some of those P-Gens. Will it be enough? It will be enough to take off the artillery. Oh, that's got to hurt. There it goes. The other SACU is about to go down, but its mission has been completed. The artillery from Team 2 Sapir is offline just at the same time as one has just been completed. So when Team 2 loses one, they gain one. So it's a net zero operation there. Alfie about half done with his artillery. And now we see that K-Link is running in the face of some Munculars trying to hide underneath some shielding. He needs to keep moving. Strat Bombers are inbound for him. One Monkey is offline. More and more PD coming into range here, but the Monkey thirsts for blood. K-Link pops out of the shield, takes out a ton of its hit points, pops back into the shielding. And with that, it will help finish off that Monkey Lord from Team 2. How is the Mavor doing? It's about to take over into the green. And this wreck of the Scathus is still there. The wreck is still there. <laughs> Uh, why, why build, why build scat this one, Maver? We'll do fine. Uh, wow. <laughs> Maver's like, why? <laughs> why, why not just build it? Obviously, you can't build on top of the scat this. That is a downside because it's technically a unit. But it's just hilarious that the wreck is still there. And Marta one's like, nah, I'll just ignore it. It's fine. <laughs> I'll just, I'll use it later or something. We have another monkey inbound here from Marta one's position. The satellite is offline. Monkey one inbound to assist, but Marta one's comm is nowhere to be found. The main, the main part of the base is still fine, except for the satellite. Of course, his new satellite's almost done though. Underneath some more ship coverage over there. Artillery landing against Team One's Mavor positioning. Donut is online here for Team Two's Omni Haven. And still the missile launchers continue to just bombard. And now we have Monkeyloids inbound from stake. And there's really nothing that Team 2 has to fight. There's a couple of gunships, but a couple of them are being actually destroyed by the monkeys' weaponries, the ground-based weaponry. That's, that's always got to hurt when a uh, unit that technically shouldn't kill you or kill something kills something. I mean, there are some, you know, AA weaponry on board the monkeys, but using the laser to kill off air units is definitely one of those, like... Ooh, that's got to hurt. A couple of drone kennels over here. They're being ripped apart as we speak. In this base here that once belonged to Cheerios is now essentially offline. ASF guarding the strap bombers. Looks like they're going to go for that uh, Mavor. The Mavor is almost done. The shielding is not that strong. And now it looks like that the uh, Scathas wreck is being reclaimed. But if those strap bombers, which they will make it in, that Mavor is going to be taken offline before it finishes. This is going to be definitely disappointing here for Marta 1. Shields are offline around the Mavor. That's going to hurt. It's inbound. It's gone. There it goes. And one of those SACUs is dead in the water. That is going to hurt. All of that time and energy spent building that uh, Mavor is gone. All of the mass and energy from the Scathus is now gone. Looks like Marta 1 is now focusing on this Scathus over here. <laughs> so we've seen one Scathus finish. We've seen one Mavor almost finish, and now we'll see another Scathus on its way to be finished. <laughs> Definitely an interesting game here, folks. Team 2's artillery still online here for Sapir. This one now online for Alfie, so Team 2 has two artillery online, but they have a big problem with all of those monkeys inbound. There's really nothing being thrown at them. And they're getting a lot of veterancy, so most of them at four and almost at one of them at five. So 50% more hit points making it even deadlier to take out. Donut spam going on the way here for Omni Haven. Team 2 definitely had... Mm, I mean, they had air at some point in a lot of the uh, mass fat farms going down here for Team 1's melon wise. Donut is over here going after Steak. Steak, will he be fine? He's going to receive a donut to the face. Oh, he's fine. He's not dead. But he had a donut land on top of him. Another donut is inbound. And it's going for Steak's commander. This could be another kill here for Team 2. Stake is underneath now some uh, Cybran shielding. 
Siren Shielding isn't going to last very long. That Zara is still online. A couple of AA placements are now in range. And, this, and the donut actually stops firing at stake, moves on to the air grid. Lots of missed opportunity for a kill there for Team 2, but looks like they're going for more lasting damage with some of those uh, P-Gens and air facilities being taken offline. Donut does get finally taken out. More facilities are now gone, but there are now two Donuts on Team 1's side of the map they can reclaim. And that Scathus is half done. More and more AAs being built to defend it in the southeast. Those monkeys are now chasing Alfie's commander. His base is essentially gone. And these monkeys killed 75,000, 79,000, 122,000. So we're talking about probably game enders, if not more, of mass. There goes Alfie's commander. And he loses a lot of ASS. Team 2 loses a lot of ASS with those ASS flying overhead. That's got to hurt. And Team 2 loses another player dropping this game to a 5v2. Still in favor of Team 1. And now Sapier has to run in fear of those monkeys. This is not looking good here for Team 2's backline. They've lost half of their bases over here. And now those monkeys are still chasing Sapier down. And Sapier just control K, seeing the writing on the wall. Besides, I'm out, see ya, bye. Making this game a now 5v1 with Omnihaven, the remaining player. And now the monkey's just moving in, killing everything else off. Tons and tons of damage, 116, 129. We could see about three, actually we're probably at 300,000 damage, or 300,000 mass killed with these monkeys alone. I mean, these monkeys paid for themselves and then some. And uh, those Cerberus PD are not going to be enough to stop those two monkeys. Three monkeys, excuse me. Nuke is outbound. It's launched right before the nuke silo is taken out. Of course, it doesn't look like the satellite will block the nuke. If you've seen that video, you know what I'm talking about. But except in this case, it would be a satellite blocking a YOLO nuke. But one monkey is taken offline. And two monkeys continue to chase down. Chicken was just completed. It's right off the assembly line, and that will deal with the rest of those monkeys from Stakes. Stakes done a very good job of just really decapitating Team 2's eco quite severely in infrastructure and everything. Just look at the objectives and what? what look at the objectives on the map and play for them. There goes more Pigeons and there it goes. Last monkey. Probably about 400,000 mass killed between those three monkeys. And that artillery is still online. Team 1. Oh, that nuke lands. Sorry. Kaboom! Lands on Martyr's base. Kills everything off. Could have actually gone after this, but uh, looks like it went after the main base. Definitely unfortunate. SMD was loaded, but could have been there in time, but it's hard to say one way or the other. At least I wasn't paying attention to it at the time, so. It would have been close, definitely, but uh, would have been a bigger loss had Martyr 1 lost this instead of this. But the Scathis is almost done. 55 minutes on the clock. And it's really not looking good for Omni Haven. He's lost half of, I mean, like I said, more than half of his bases. He does have one artillery, but I feel like had Team 2 gone for some sort of game in there at some point, maybe they'd be in a better position. We do see a Czar running around the map going after some uh, interceptors. Teleporter spot says Dulaha. There is a nice little engineer over here just hanging out. Looks like there's a sniper bot shooting at a couple of those missile launchers. It's very funny that there's just one of them sitting down there on the edge of the map. Looks like it was trying to go after the uh, disruptor, but satellite overhead. There's no energy here for Omnihaven. He's really struggling there. Oh, he's getting his uh, energy back online, so the shields will pop online here very shortly. But if that uh, defense satellite... Nope, it is not enough time. K-Link cancels the teleporter. Donut is overhead. K-Link is getting out of there. That's another donut that Team 1 will have access to for mass. Team 2 has donated a decent amount of mass to Team 1's cause in that regard. We had two over here, another one over here. Tons, of course, some ASF and strap bombers going after game enders. Over here to the north, another donut falls. It's going after Martyr 1, takes off almost half of his hit points and some hit points on board that Novak Center. And that Scathis is almost done. That uh, Pigeon is looking uh, ripe for some cascading effects. One more artillery shell and it's game over. The shield needs to pop back online. Shot, barely off the edge of the map, into the void. Oh, the shields come back online at the last second. 
And the Scathis is now online, so we've seen two Scathis, Scathai? Scathai so far. And almost one Mavor. Almost. It was in the green. It was almost there. Looks like this is the latch ditch, ditch attempt by Team 2. And Team 2's Omni Haven just gets out of there anyways. And now it is a win for Team 1 at 57 minutes on the clock. Team 1 wins the game. And MVPs for this match, I mean, I got to give it to Marta 1. I Well, ooh, I think, no, I think overall, I think Marta 1 definitely played a huge role in this game. Of course, Pavor did get a Scathus. He lost his Scathus, unfortunately, and in that process died. Definitely unfortunate, so his uh, time was definitely cut short. But I think Marta 1 in taking over Pavor's position, going for the artillery, probably could have built, uh, not probably, could have built a lot more shielding to protect it, especially because he saw the attack from earlier on. Built or assisted building another Scathos over here. Did a great job going after Team 2's forces over here to the east. Was instrumental in killing off two players. Essentially, it was just a um, a loss of APM, I think, was as time went on. Just Team 2 was losing player after player after player. There's only so much you can do per minute. And with less players means usually less actions, which usually means a loss. Not necessarily, but it does contribute to it. And that play from Stake really just cutting Team 2's just a lot of their mass was just evaporated because of that. But I did like that play from Mellon Wise just teleporting a couple of uh, SACUs and then take out their artillery. I did like that play. But I do think overall I think Marta 1 gets the MVP, at least in my book. Let me know down in the comments in your opinion who deserves MVP. And, of course, if you haven't done so already, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so very much for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in the next one.